Hello and welcome to this webinar on Integrated Quality Assurance in Radiation Oncology. My name is Susan Curtis and I'm Managing Editor of the online publishing team here at IOP Publishing. In a moment, I'll pass over to today's speaker, James Nunn, who is a senior medical physicist at Lewis Gale Hospital Pulaski in Virginia. In the webinar, James will explain how integrated quality assurance systems are now being used in radiation oncology clinics to store and manage the large volume of data required for regulatory compliance. James will introduce some of the software packages that are now available for integrated QA and will explain how one of these software packages has been implemented in the Radiation Oncology Clinic at Lewis Gale. He will also share his thoughts on how QA software could be further developed in the future. Note that this webinar is approved for one credit with CAMPEP, MDCB and ASRT and a guide to that process is available in the attachment section of the webinar. James welcomes your questions, so please send in any questions you might have at any time using the questions button on your screen. James will try to answer as many as possible at the end of the presentation, and any un unanswered questions will be answered by email once the webinar is over. You can also rate the webinar at any point using the ratings button. So now I'll hand over to James. Okay. we'll get the webinar started here. So um, as mentioned previously, I'm James Nunn. Uh, I work at Lewis Gale Hospital in Pulaski, Virginia. And today we're going to talk about integrated quality assurance in oncology. And the title of the presentation probably should have been Our Journey to Integrated Quality Assurance or something like that, Trials and Tribulations and Struggles uh, for Integrated Quality Assurance. So we'll move forward a slide. So as far as disclosures go, we are a beta site for MyQA, that is uh, IBA's QA product. Uh, I'm a member of their innovators board, and so we meet and provide advice to IBA on the steering of software and things of that nature. And we receive, uh, nor the, neither myself nor our clinic receives any financial incentives or free hardware from IBA. Uh, we, we pay for it just like everybody else. So um, some background on me. Um, in my former life, I did a lot of imaging physics. I started out in radiology and nuclear medicine, and so I sort of grew up with the record-keeping and regulatory requirements for that, for accreditation, all of the documentation required for that. And in addition, um, I was and am still a practicing health physicist, and so I'm very familiar with regulatory requirements for radioactive materials, for industrial things, for environmental things. And um, in 2007, I jumped the fence and went into radiation oncology. This is uh, actually this is my 10th year anniversary in oncology. So why integrate? Um, at present, there are numerous software packages from companies that will allow you to input and analyze your QA data, your images, uh, any of your spreadsheets that you have uh, to keep track of your QA data. But at most places, and still to some degree here, record keeping is a paper-driven process. You know, most things are kept on paper. You have your spreadsheets, uh, and you may, may or may not print those out. Um, some of the QA for your machines is still on paper. And to further compound this issue, we all have, uh, at least in the U.S., we have federal regulators, we've got uh, insurance people that look at things, we've got state regulators, we've got our radioactive materials people, and all of these folks have to look through different things. They all want to see different aspects of your quality assurance program for which they're auditing. And so what this means is you have to sit someone down with a mountain of paperwork to go through. Uh, and so a regulatory inspector can spend an entire day sifting through uh, your paperwork looking for some sort of item of noncompliance. So to integrate, to try to get this off of um, get this off of paper, to get it in more of a paperless format uh, where we can keep things uh, nice and nice and uh, neat. So personal pressure points for me, um, and I think I did a presentation very similar to this. A couple of years ago, and this is there are a couple of slides from that presentation in here, this being one of them, that are still 
my personal pressure points, right? If you have a QA test you need to do, something you need to do on your machine, your afterloader, your simulator, you can do it. I mean, if you give me enough time, I can usually QA anything and write up some report. Um, but typically, as things are going, at least U.S.-wise, we've got you know more uh, QA left at the end of the month and time to do it in, and so it takes a while to get some of this stuff done. Furthermore, you've got all of the paperwork. Where do you keep it? What format do you keep it in? Do you store it on a hard drive? Do you print it off? Do you duplicate it? You know, how do you replicate your quality assurance data to make sure you don't lose it? Um, you know, you could have a hard drive failure and lose five years' worth of quality assurance data if it's not backed up correctly. So remembering my time in nuclear medicine, uh, when I used to have NRC inspectors coming through and looking at things, if you don't have the documentation for it, you didn't do it. And so losing things is not really an option. You don't want to do that. That's uh, frowned upon by most regulators. So as far as integrated solutions go, we have a whole lot of options. Fortunately for us, we've got lots of people making these things. Um, Sun Nuclear has their SunCheck software, and I think that's the current name. And if there's somebody on here from Sun, please please correct me if any of these are, are not correct. Um, they have their SunCheck software, which is, I've, I've looked at that, that's a fine piece of software. Standard Imaging has got QA Pilot, which is another fine piece of software. IBA Dosimetry has their MyQA package, which is what we use here. Um, Varian has Cumulate, and I have not ha I've had an opportunity to see some of that, and what I see is, is, is very nice. Uh, the last time I looked at it, it was more focused on linear acceler accelerator QA. Um, Electa has their Aqua product. Uh, Image Owl has their Total QA, which I saw at AAPM year before last, and also very nice piece of software, very easy to use. Uh, and, of course, Mobius Medical Systems has their Dose Lab Pro uh, for doing machine QA and machine analytics, PQI, and things of this nature. And we have uh, Dose Lab Pro here as well. And so you got lots and lots and lots of choices um, for these. All of these are you, – you'll not make a mistake with any of these pieces of software. The, the vendors have really stepped up to fill the space with lots of high-quality uh, integrated solutions for keeping track of all of these things that we're required to do. So you have all these choices. You've decided we're going to jump off the diving board into the pool, which may or may not be filled. <laughs> You're going to go wireless with your QA. You're going to take this off of paper and try to integrate it into some piece of software. There's some questions that need to be addressed objectively when you're ready to do this. And I say objectively because you really need to look at the entire space that you're going to be filling. What's your hardware, right? You're going to be putting this on a computer. This is going to have to go on some server. What do you have that you can put this on? Some of these systems require large SQL databases. This can be an expensive proposition if you have to buy new hardware. That's something your facility is going to need to pay for. Um, what about your IT infrastructure? You know, do you have adequate support, uh, and will you be doing this alone? You know, is your IS department going to support you in this? When you look at your connections between your PCs that you're going to be using, the PCs that are storing the data, or the servers, do you have enough bandwidth to move things back and forth? You know, some of these things move entire CT data sets across. Some of them just move your fluence maps. Some of them just move single points of data. And so if you're on a 10 meg connection to your server that may or may not be adequate for some of these things. So you really need to get with your IT people to look at your, you know, your sort of infrastructure and where you're setting at right this moment. Um, server and client hardware, again, with your, you know, what, what are your needs? Um, some vendors, platforms run in the cloud or they're cloud-based. And what I have found with is different healthcare facilities whether they are privately owned, whether they're publicly owned, whether they're state-owned, uh, have very different requirements for what data you are allowed to keep on or off-site. Um, my company, for example, does not want any data stored off-site. So a cloud solution for us is not going to, it's not going to work. And if you set one of these things up without looking at your security requirements, your data security policies, um, you can possibly you know, put your job at risk if you're caught exporting large amounts of facility data to an off-site storage without 
adequate permission. Um, I know data breaches, at least in the U.S. now, start at somewhere on the neighborhood of you know 25,000 per occurrence and go up. So before you move to a, a cloud-based storage system or a cloud-based QA system, you need to make sure that you have that in writing, um, that you're allowed to put that stuff off-site. Now, the good news is if you can put it off-site, that's, that's really good because it can be backed up in the cloud, uh, and your, your chance of losing data is very slim, or should be very slim, assuming that the cloud system is set up correctly. This is the this, this second to last bullet is one of the more important ones that, that I have seen in working with getting mine set up, um, helping IBA with other folks set up as, as people are installing the software. What are your expectations for installation? And that's something that needs to be decided with your sales representative up front. You know, and I put in here a one day setup with a fully functional system is something that no vendor can deliver. And that's just my opinion. That's, that, I mean, maybe somebody's got something that can do that in one day, but taking your entire quality assurance program for multiple accelerators, high dose rate afterloader, your treatment planning system, your simulators, all of this stuff, and converting everything you've done for the last 10 or 15 years on paper or in spreadsheets, converting that to one of these pieces of software is not something that's going to happen in one day. This is going to be a, a long process. Uh, to some degree trial and error where you're going to set things up, see how they work for a couple of days, and you may have to go back and modify, depending on feedback from people using the system. And so unlike, which brings up a nice point, unlike most pieces of physics software that we're used to using, it's, it's just us using it, right? If you're doing IMRT QA or you're using your scanning tank, it's just us that are using it. It's just the physicists that are using this. When you have an integrated QA system, your dosimetrists are using this. Your therapists are using this for morning QA. Your directors and administrators may or may not be using this to pull data from. And so, it, it, you know, this is you, you're going to have user feedback once you get this thing installed. You know, we'd like this reordered, or do we need to do this test, or this test needs to be added, or you, you know, you'll find things that need to change as your installation progresses. Um, so, your relationship with your vendor and their level of customer support should be a topic of discussion. So when you purchase one of these systems, regardless of which vendor it's from, you need to be very clear and upfront with your sales representative about, you know, these are my expectations. I would like to have this working within 30 days, within 60 days, within 90 days, and make sure that that particular vendor can deliver that to you uh, or come somewhere close to it. So there's a lot of factors that, that go into to choosing um, one of these pieces of software. And so you should consider all of these questions. Um, look at your IT, look at your data security requirements, um, look at your login requirements. You know, you may have different password requirements in your hospital. Certain vendors may or may not be able to provide you with the level of user access or restriction um, that you're looking for. So our background with MyQA, um, our facility, has for many, many, many years, um, both of our facilities, our, our, the primary and, and us, have had IBA equipment for years. It's pretty much all we've had, water tanks, IMRT QAs, chambers, lots and lots of IBA equipment, in addition to other vendors, but the, the, the workhorses have primarily been uh, IBA. Early in the development of this software, one of the engineers called and asked if I'd be willing to look at the piece of software they were developing. Um, that, that took the OmniPro IMR TQA and integrated it onto some, you know, different platform, moving it forward. Uh, uh, they were talking about integrating all of their pieces of software into one package, and yeah, we said, sure, why not? And so this started with a very early, very early version of MyQA installed on a laptop, uh, and it was pretty much just IMR TQA with some limited stuff you could do with the matrix. Um, fast forward three years. We're now using MyQA for pretty much everything. You know, we're trying to do as much data recording in this piece of software as we can. So everything from TPS QA, SIM QA, HDR QA, Linac QA, we've got some things that aren't even physics QA put in there. Um, and this was sometimes more than the uh, IBA engineers expected. We would come back to them and say, you know, it'd be nice if we could track this. And that's not really even a physics duty, but it would be nice to track it. Um, and there's been roughly two releases each year since we started testing. And each release that has come out has really had 
meaningful improvements uh, that have been made to it. Um, these improvements have been from people doing early testing on the newer version that's about to come out and a lot of feedback from the customers, which for me, I, I guess, is really important because there's no such thing as a perfect piece of software. But what is important is that the vendor realizes this, follows and listens to the feedback from the customer, and integrates that feedback into each release. So we've had many releases since we've had this piece of software, and each one of them just adds more and more features that we find useful to it. So why are we using an integrated solution? What are the, what are the benefits of having this um, solution for doing QA? The first is keeping things on a SQL database. I like SQL databases. Um, they're easy to back up, and if you're set up correctly, they're almost uh, maintenance-free. What we have with our setup is we have uh, everything's installed on a virtual environment. The MyQA and the SQL server that run both of our departments that we have using this piece of software are installed entirely virtually. And so all the server stuff exists as a virtual appliance that is on a server somewhere. I have no idea where it is. Um, I think I know, but <laughs> they don't tell us that. But it centralizes um, everything in one place. The nice thing about the, the VM, the virtual appliance, if this server malfunctions, if something goes wrong with it, if it gets a virus, if it gets anything that goes wrong with it, these VMs are backed up nightly in multiple locations. So if I lose anything, if I get data corruption, a virus, somebody gets in and tears things up, if we just delete the entire VM and then grab last night's backup, throw it on the server, hit start, and everything's right back up. Um, why we installed on a VM was the cost. Uh, that was a big part of it because asking for a, a server to run a SQL database on would have cost a couple thousand bucks. And guys said, listen, we can, we can give you a VM for free if you want. And you really can't tell any performance difference um, between that and a, a physical box. So I didn't have hardware to purchase for that. This allows the distribution and installation of a much smaller client software that does not need all the SQL Server components installed on it. All of the heavy lifting for our integrated QA, for my QA, is done on the server. And so the clients install on individual workstations. Um, and so you, you don't need all of the, the large pieces of software, the large components that go with it. So you can send out, for remote installation, you can send out a smaller software package that will allow you to upgrade your systems uh, a lot faster. This is a big one for me. Uh, the the third from the bottom bullet point there. If you have to replace a local machine in your workflow, say one of the one of my sequencer PCs dies, when we were still using the older versions of OmniPro, whatever we were using, all of that data was stored locally. Um, when you had a machine die, you had to somehow get the old data back off of it. You had to come back in, reinstall, put the data back where it was supposed to be. With something like MyQA and other similar software, if you reinstall the client, you reconnect to the database, and it's right back up. You know, there's very little lag time in replacing PCs. I know at least at our facility, we have a two-year tech refresh on all our PCs, so every 24 months we're getting new workstations. So that, that's cut a lot of time out uh, for, for us at least getting things updated. This allows a more efficient reporting of QA data. Right? I, I, you can pull data from this, you can make custom reports if you want. Uh, if you've got a large campus or a large geographic area, you can drill down into each facility or you can look at all of them combined. And back to the point earlier about having to review, this one piece of software that you can put as much data in as you can hold provides a single point of review for regulators or other inspectors that need your data. If you have a JCO inspector that wants to see something, you can sit them down and you can pull up the cockpit, which we'll talk about in a minute, and they can look at all of your QA data that you have available to them. The same thing for a uh, NRC inspector or a state inspector or a ACR auditor or an ACRO auditor. You can set them down at that one system, at one screen, and they can pull and query any data that they can see. Uh, they can look at trends in your data, and it's just one point where all of your QA data can be reviewed. So we have a multiple facility installation. So as I said, we, we have 
the, the big server is installed on a virtual machine. We went live with IBA MyQA January of 2016. So we had gone through several beta versions. We bought it. We Previous to 2016, we kept the IMRT QA in it. And so right after the first of the year, we started integrating a lot of the TG142 things in there, all of the machine QA. We started integrating the TG66 SIM QA in there, and we just slowly added to it. We've added treatment planning system QA onto that. Um, so all morning warm-up QA was performed and recorded in MyQA. So everything we do for morning warm-up on the Linux is done in MyQA. All the IMRT QA is acquired and analyzed in MyQA. Um, it's actually really nice because you can have someone acquiring on a workstation at the machine. Uh, you close that data out, and it's immediately available at another workstation to have somebody work that data up for reporting. And so you can have uh, multiple people accessing this data simultaneously. The data is accessible in the cockpit. We can pull this up, the web-based server that is used to do data review. Uh, the director can pull that up if she wants to look at something. Um, and then we added our CT and HDR in late 2016. And so we've been slowly adding to what we're keeping in MyQA as the, as the year has gone by. And in early 2017, our Salem site, uh, and they are far, far uh, up the road from us. And they have, uh, we bought licenses for them, and they installed their clients attached to the same virtual SQL server that we have, and they go forth and do everything in there. So they've got their IMRT QA put in there. Um, they just got a new Blue 2 last year, which is interfaced with my QA for all of their beam scanning. And so now, rather than keeping this beam scanning data in some file somewhere on a hard drive, it's integrated into the SQL database. And they're working on getting their monthly QA implemented and uh, put in here. And so, Okay. So the overview of the installation. So the MyQA uh, unifies all of your existing QAs uh, under one software package. If you were using uh, different versions of IBA software prior to MyQA, this takes everything and adds it into one nice piece of software. The system, of course, it's installed on a centralized SQL database. Um, installs are done in your department. Your licensing is done remotely. And you can easily access and cross-reference between your devices. You can compare your 2D ion chamber array with Blue Phantom uh, data. And your users are allowed access by your admin and can be limited by site, role, and type of user. So you can limit access by therapists at site A can only see data from site A. Therapists at site B can only see uh, data for site B. If you have shared physics, you can let both of those physicists access um, Let's see here. Someone is typing us a message. Is the audio okay? Somebody had mentioned that it's somebody had mentioned that it is echoing. Okay, maybe not. Um, but yeah, that was a, that was a big big thing for us. We've got the whole uh, minimal amount of data necessary sort of philosophy going through hospitals in the U.S. and people who should not have access to certain data just shouldn't have access to it. Uh, my Salem facility, the therapists don't necessarily need access to QA data from Pulaski. And so you can you can segregate your user access um, by role, type of user, or anything else. And it's, a, it's actually a lot of options um, that you can use to set that up. I've talked with the engineers. The, the only thing I would like to see with this, with the... Um, uh, user access is Active Directory integration. That would be almost perfect for our piece of software. Then we could give people uh, access through the same Active Directory. They have access to HealthStream and Mosaic and other things like that. Um, so you have different modules inside MyQA. So if you're an IBA user already, you're familiar with some of these. If you're not, um, Years ago, you had separate software for the Blue Tank, you had separate software for Morning QA, and you had separate software for IMRT QA. And so this has taken everything uh, and added it into one common platform. So you have your MyQA patients, which is your IMRT QA. You have your machines, which is all of your machine QA. And you have your MyQA Accept, which is what you run your Blue Phantom with, or Blue 2 if you have 
Um, I think you have to have a CCU in order for it to integrate. So unfortunately, my my older CU500E uh, Blue One scanning system will not uh, attach to this system, uh, but we're hoping to get a new one of those at some point. So the machines module, um, inside the machines module, let's see what this next slide is right here. So the machines module is where you're going to be doing all of your your TG142 QA, your TG66 QA, if you're going to do TPS QA, all of those things are done inside your machines module. Um, you can set up your custom queues that you want to use. Let's see what we got here. I want to see if I can make this somewhat bigger on my end. Probably not. So the MyQA machines interfaces with the following devices. If you have a Star Trek, it will inter interface with that. And if you have a Matrix Evolution or a Matrix Triple F, uh, you can acquire profile data with that. Your imaging plugins work for all major phantoms for MV, KV, and CBCT. So you can use you can use the ones provided by IBA. You can use a standard imaging phantom. You can use a dose lab phantom. And so it's got multiple phantoms that are already built in for your QA. Your MLC module can analyze picket fence tests, moving MLCs, VMAT tests, Ling tests. All those are available for um, for analyzation. Tests are scheduled in a template and set up at the required frequency. So you can see there's a, a, a snippet from a task template there. So you name this, you set your description up, and this description can be as long or as detailed or as short uh, as the user desires. And then you set your recurrence up for this, and you say, I want this done every day, or I want this done every month or once a year. And in your user permissions, you can set which users can perform this test, can finish this test, can skip this test as, uh, as, things are, as things are required. So just as an overview, for those of you who have IBA equipment, you'll be familiar with this. For those of you who don't, the Star Trek is the device that is set 700 and some odd ion chambers at a half millimeter or half cm pitch, which is used for morning QA, routine QA, and of course your matrix or matrix triple F for evolution is your 1,020 ion chamber uh, array for doing IMRT QAs. And just for those who want it later, I've listed out the uh, specifications of each one of these um, in case you want to compare it with what you're using, size of active field, number of chambers, and so forth and so on. Um, they're nice. I, I do like the the Star Trek for morning QA. Uh, it's what we've used now for about six or seven years. There are nice center lines scribed on the front and sides of the matrix in the Star Trek that you can use for laser position verification and all kinds of other things. Um, and you can use MLCs or JAWS to do whatever you want. You can acquire profiles with these. You can look at uh, depth doses from those, which brings us to the next slide. There are energy constancy plates, and you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people get these when they get a Matrix or a Star Trek, but I absolutely love these things. Um, they're different thickness QA plates that go on top of your uh, device that you can use for doing more than just profile analysis in the morning. Um, you can do electron energy with the plates. It's got different uh, densities of plug-ins that go around that you can use to make sort of a, a pseudo-electron PDD. Uh, same thing with photons. It's going to check two different depths. It has, uh, and that's all the way around in a circle. Um, you can check your field size. It's got various field sizes scribed on the top of these things. You can use it to check your light field versus x-ray field. Okay, now we get into the meat and potatoes of things right here. So this is our morning QA routine. And so this is built from TG142. Uh, all recommended tests were added as part of this template. We tried to be as close to this task group report as we could for morning QA and then added some stuff on top of that. We use a star track to acquire the beam data. Um, and this allows us in the morning to take a whole lot more data than is actually required for morning QA. For example, part of our morning QA, we do profile constancy. And it's got symmetry, flatness, center, penumbra. And all of these are compared to a baseline. The energy constancy plates, um, we use that to sort of make sure the en energy is where it should be on the machines every morning. Uh, we do a 10 and a 60 degree enhanced dynamic wedge check every morning. Um, and that just sort of comes along. It takes another 100 monitor unit shot to do that. 
um, and the output's checked for all photon and electron energies. And this is, with this, we do this at the same time we have two variant C-series Clinax here, and those of you using a variant will know that you got your morning warm-up that you're supposed to do. It's a, on mine, it's a 9, 12, 16, 20, and then a 6 MeV electrons. You, move, you, you do a 100 MU shot. We have the Star Trek sitting on the couch, and we just acquire those fields while the machine is warming up, and so we use that for our morning QA. So it's a, really a, a whole lot more than is required for morning QA, but we're making the, you know, we're making the beam, we might as well collect it and use it anyway. But you can see also that there are things on, we've got safety stuff, we've got your beam on indicator, your door interlock safety, we're doing the EPID uh, CBCT repositioning, EPID repositioning, and all of those things that one should do to make sure your machine is warmed up in the morning. So some of the things that we, we went back to IBA a couple of years ago and looked at was we have an end-of-the-day checklist, and this is a non-physics-related test that we added to our workflow. You know, you just add it as part of your your daily QA, and this is the things that our therapists have to do at the end of the day and monthly. We have a, a JACO-required monthly room inspection uh, that where you're checking for stained tiles that, you know, you don't have any expired supplies, those sorts of things, and then, of course, at the end of the day, have they done their charge export, linen stocked, is the oxygen off, clean the room, you know, those sorts of things. So it's, it's, it's actually really good for keeping track of this and making sure those things are done. So physics and non-physics related tasks can be added to this equally as quickly. Uh, we got uh, an afterloader in September of last year, and so I thought to myself, why not put as much of this HDR QA as we can in here? So we built a daily safety check uh, list inside my QA for our daily safety checks for the afterloader. Most of these are simple yes or no, or pass or fail, which is fine. I mean, it really, you know, a lot of them don't need data. But what it does do is it covers all of the required, all the requirements from uh, our Virginia Agreement State regulators that we're supposed to do, which mirror the Nuclear Regulatory Commission regulations for morning warm-up for those things. This is performed by a warm-up therapist who does the stuff in the morning, and then it's signed by myself or one of my colleagues that it was done correctly. And, of course, for this, I actually still make a printout of this for regulatory review. It's just a one-page, sorry, it's a two-page sheet listing the test, listing what was required of the test, the results of the test, who performed the test, and you know, it works, works really well um, for HDR. TPS QA. So we added this a little while ago. So looking at the TG53 tests and what's required um, for those, um, I actually, for a lot of the spatial measurements, I use a, a Lucy Phantom, and we test our hard and soft copy fidelity, your ROIs, your expansions, your auto point placement, your dose at Dmax for standard fields. And so we keep all of these in the, we keep all of these in here. Uh, we have a nice you know, sort of a monthly list that we can go through, and we use a standard plan and keep track of it uh, all the way in there. The other thing we added was the post-upgrade consistency checks um, for each of the facilities, and this is in case we go from version 1 to 2 of a piece of software. We have a list of things that we need to go in and check to make sure it's still consistent from, you know, pre-upgrade to post-upgrade. So I I like this. This is this is really you know it's really nice to to have this in there, and you have a very well defined set of tests that you can just go through. And inside each one of these tests, you know there is the test template snippet that I have here is the ROI creation and volume accuracy, where we contour one of the targets, we do a uniform expansion, and it should be you know plus or minus a certain number of cc's, and you know we can record that data and keep track of it. CT SIM QA, kind of the same thing here. We're following the TG66 protocol, and we do all the morning QA, monthly QA, weekly QA, and annual QA uh, required by those tests. And physics does all the monthly and annual stuff. The SIM therapist does all the daily and weekly stuff. And, of course, everything's maintained in our database, and you can pull up and create a report at any time you want. Um, most CT performance phantoms are compatible with the imaging plugins. Um, you can do this. Um, Inside my QA, if you have the imaging plugins, or 
you can take the data from if you're using PIPS Pro for this. I, we still use PIPS Pro for a lot of our uh, imaging analysis. I think my colleague up the street still uses Dose Lab for a lot of his. And you can input you know, those data, or at least that that test was performed inside your MyQA. So even if you're not analyzing the data inside MyQA, you can keep track of whether or not it was done in this piece of software. Um, so not everything needs a, a number uh, to go with it. So this is one that we're still working on right here. I'm still trying to figure out how to get this done. I don't even know that it's really needed, but I thought it was kind of neat to try to do this, is to do a acceptance test, an entire queue for acceptance testing of Varian Linac, and then use that data to correlate routine annual QA tests with it. And so we've been working on this. This is a this is a pretty difficult one to get set up. There's a lot of moving parts in there, but uh, yeah, I, I think another, I think probably by our next annual we'll have this set up and you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, sometimes they work, and <laughs> sometimes they don't. All right, so you know the big question on everybody's mind is what you do with the spreadsheets. You were a physicist, we love us some spreadsheets. Everybody's got a spreadsheet for everything. And in you know, and, and I will agree and with, I, I don't know how the rest of the softwares work, but I can still do a whole lot more in Excel than I can in most of these softwares, especially if you're going to do complicated calculations. You really need to do it in a spreadsheet where you can verify the math. That's cool. No problem. Um, above all of your tests, you see the little, this little green button where the red arrow is pointing. There's an import um, button for most of your tests that you can use if it's a numeric test where you can set up a template based on your particular spreadsheet that you want to use, your monthly outputs or your uh, beam stability spreadsheets. You set up a template. You go through and you do your data in your spreadsheet. You go to MyQA. You get your test set up. You tell it the data you wish to pull from that spreadsheet. You hit import. It pulls your data in automatically from that spreadsheet. And each subsequent time you pull in data from a different spreadsheet or from updated data, it will pull that in and track it. And so for me, th this is this is really nice. I, even though we've got lots of integrated QA here, I still do a whole lot of stuff on spreadsheets, and it's important to me to be able to do that. So um, I actually like this feature uh, when they put it in. It, it kind of simplifies a lot of things. If you can't make the piece of software do whatever calculation you want, it will. You know, you can go through and set that up. So the MyQA patients, this is IMRT QA. You know, you can control your matrix directly from the software, so there's no separate thing for that. All your data is stored on your SQL database. Uh, you can do I DICOM RT data if you want to bring that in and compare DICOM. You can check the fluence maps. Um, the next release will have the film analysis integrated back into it, and so all this stuff is just done in, and you do your IMRT QA um, the same as you would before. But Everything is stored on your, your big database uh, somewhere else. Your DICOM RT data, uh, there's a landing page for that where you can actually choose what data you wish to import, whether you want to do all of the planes in a dose cube or just a couple of them. Um, you can receive plans from pretty much anywhere. If you've got oncology packs, your TPS, and we've done some file-based importing, which uh, seems to work as well. Your MyQA Accept module, this is one of the later additions um, to the software. This is what actually drives your tank. And so you, using a CCU or another compatible piece of software, you can collect and analyze data from your scanning phantom. You can use a chamber. You can use your diode array. It's compatible with the stealth chamber, all the ion chambers. Um, maybe some possible dolphin integration in the future for those of you familiar with uh, IBA's transmission detector. And, you know, it, it, does a, it does a good job making sure, you know, it's, for me it's, it's better than the standalone laptop that is usually used with a Blue Phantom. You know, for years and years and years, we had the one laptop, that's what you use. You plug the cable into the back of the laptop, drive your tank, and the data is on that hard drive. And you could back it up to a network drive, but if either one of those leaves, your data is gone. And so at least with the new modules, all of your scanning data can be imported into your SQL database. And so what we're going to do is uh, we have a Blue 2 at our Salem facility, and we are planning on buying a new Blue 2 next year and sharing the CCU between both facilities. It seems like a, a no-brainer. The odds of us using it simultaneously are probably pretty slim. Except interface, it looks exactly like the 
um, OmniPro except version 7. Nothing's changed with the interface. All of your scan cues that you had will still be compatible with that. Um, your CCU and your acquisition are on the same VLAN, hopefully. Um, you can track your control data from the cockpit. Uh, scan data can be exported to your SQL database, and you can compare this against Matrix Profile, Star Trek, Dolphin, wherever you get profiles. Uh, the only thing that uh, it's, not, it's not working real well with importing PDDs right now, but I'm sure that will be uh, that will be uh, forthcoming soon. How can you see your results? So you have, uh, along with your MyQA, you have the cockpit, which is the web-based interface that you can use to view all of your QA data. And so you can view it from any device on any network that's it's got access to that. Uh, your results page, you can look at the most recent tasks completed. You can look at trends in your trend result page. There's a, a section here where you can see your patient plan and your QA sorting. You can sort patients by site. You can sort patients by facility, uh, any other way you want to do that. And then online view of your patient QA database. So you can see which patients have been completed, verified, which ones need reworking, who did it, when they did it, and it sort of gives you an overall status of where your, your QA is in your department with respect to your multiple patients. So I got through that. Um, and that was kind of quick for the cockpit. If any of you have any questions, I'm sure if you contact your local sales representative, they will happily give you a demo uh, of, the, of the cockpit software and show you something a little more robust than that. So thoughts for the future while we wrap this thing up in the next couple of minutes. Good news is we got many QA vendors for this software. The bad news is that we have many QA vendors. And so this is where, this is where I go rogue right here and walk away from my one vendor and step back and look at everyone as a group. Each of the vendors has their own analysis methods, test setups, reportings, and file formats. Um, in some cases, choices are good, right? This is, you know, you, you, this is, it, it's good to have different choices. The bad news is each vendor has their own analysis methods, test setups, reportings, and file formats. And so taking a look at this, um, I would pose the following questions to the group, to all of us here present who actually work in this field. Is there a need to standardize the database formatting for electronic QA, right? Should we ask for this to be in some, you know, we did this with imaging years ago when everything went to the DICOM standard. You know, all of medical images are communicated in one standard format, regardless of which vendor they come from. Is there need for standardized test setups? Maybe. Is this something the AAPM should consider as a task group? You know, if we're all going to move to electronic QA, maybe AAPM needs to urge vendors to say, all right, if you're going to do profile analysis on this machine, this is the method that has to be used, and this is the file format that you at least need to be putting something out in. Um, because what if you want to change vendors, right? You say you want to move from vendor A to vendor B. You don't want to lose. This is like moving from Mosaic to Aria. You don't want to lose five years' worth of QA data because you can't convert it into another format. So maybe something like uh, RTOG file format for plans, something for the same thing that you you know, you maybe want to say if you're going to put out profile data, it needs to be in this format with this sort of universal header, perhaps. Um, you know, because odds are you're going to change vendors at some point. I mean, the, the, nobody stays with one vendor for 30 years. At least most people don't. The bigger question is who owns that data? And the way that I look at this is that we pay our software vendors. When we buy the software, we have a license to use the software. The input data is mine. I'm using their meat grinder to make the sausage, but at the end of the you know at the end of the meat grinder, the sausage is still mine. And so, should we require our vendors to allow us to export our data in some universal format? This is back to the standardized database formatting. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, and of course, if there's not a standard, how do you get data from one system to a new system? And if any of you've seen a mosaic to ARIA transfer where you do large data transfers, that stuff's expensive when someone has to build a custom filter to go through and transfer from, you know, one system to another. So this is just something to think about for us as physicists as we're moving forward with electronic QA data and, you know, what are some expectations that we should have for our vendors to allow us to do with our data after it's gone through their, you know, number cruncher, what we will with it, you know, 
So I, that's those are sort of free-floating questions right there, and if anybody has any suggestions, I would be more than happy to hear them. Um, all right, so now we're at questions. We're at 45 minutes, so I've I've hopefully left enough time for for questions if anyone has anything. So do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, we do. So thanks, thanks, James, for a great uh, presentation, and we'll uh, take some questions now. If you've got any questions that you haven't um, submitted yet, then please um, do still add your questions now, um, and any that we don't answer, uh, you'll get a response by email. Um, so if we can start off uh, with one, I think it's a, a specific clarification that someone is looking for um, in terms of active directory. And whether the, and the question is whether that is um, supported or not in my it, so at the Active moment. Directory yeah that that is uh, you, you, that was correct Active Directory for at least for my QA access is not supported right at this moment um, I, I think that would be really good for IBA to do and I, I think they're working on that but I don't think that's a trivial matter adding that um, when you're going to do AD integration into a large you know sort of enterprise infrastructure that's that's not as simple as just saying well we're going to you know because it it needs to be compatible with uh, many other things. So um, I'm hoping that will come. And that will, at least for one thing, it will eliminate one other username that my therapist or dosimetrist or myself have to remember. It will just integrate with our current, at least in HCA, a 3.4 ID, and you just go right in when you log into your machine. So. Okay, great. Um, and c could you give me an example of something that you can do with the um, integrated MyQA software that perhaps you weren't able to do with the previous setup you had? So one of those is where I talked about changing out computers. Uh, I can swap out a PC and still have all of my data right there, which is really, really handy. Um, I could not, I did not have sort of that cockpit level access to my QA on at least for patients, on knowing who's been acquired, who's been analyzed, whether fluence maps have been made for somebody. or, um, And then, of course, all of the trending for things that I just typically had on paper. And for me, for me, the biggest thing is is having the queue set up, those test templates set up on a time schedule, right? So every time I open up the machines module, it lists my machines. It lists what tests need to be done. And, you know, if you get to the 28th of the month and it still says you have 32 tests left on, you know, your 2100 IX, guess what? You're probably not going home early that night. <laughs> and so uh, the, the reminder for me is at least it is very nice um, to to be able to to have that software to remind me, oh, yeah, by the way, you've got, you know, it's almost the end of the month. You, you've not done your CTQA yet. You might want to go in there and do that. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And if, if someone doesn't have um, IBA hardware, can they still use the MyQA software? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see any reason why not. Um, now, of course, with uh, it, you, you, cannot, you cannot drive a uh, map check with IBA software, nor can you drive a matrix with any sort of Sun nuclear software. But, yeah, you can use, you know, I mean, it will, if you're talking about analyzing patient data, it will... You know, you import fluence maps and RT data or acquired maps. You can, yeah, you can, that, that stuff's sort of universal now. Um, and so I've got another question here. It says, do you need a dedicated license server for implementing MyQA? Does MyQA use a floating or stationary PC-bound licenses? That is a fantastic question. It uses PC-bound licenses. It does not have a floating license server, and that is a fantastic idea. <laughs> if, if any of the uh, if any of the IBA engineers are on the line, yeah. It, 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 so you have each workstation has its own license, and it has gotten substantially uh, easier uh, to do that licensing. The, the initial one was is pretty rough, but uh, it's gotten a whole lot easier as things have gone along. Um, let's see. Are you using the Varian MPC for the TrueBeam in conjunction with MyQA for daily checks? I'm not going to get a TrueBeam until March, so I can't really answer that, and unfortunately my colleague is not on the line to answer that. Um, for morning QA, is there a place for physics to sign off on performed QA done by the therapist or dosimetrist for LINAC and HDR unit? There actually is. Um, the morning QA can be done, so this is when you start checking off items that have been done, it, each item inside the test queue 
when they hit complete, will mark it as complete by whoever's logged into the system. And then when all of those items are done, they just exit out of the software. Physics comes in. They look at the results of all those, and then physics actually finishes that entire test, so it's stamped with your stamped with your name on it. Um, or if you print if you printed a hard copy for small tests like HDR, um, we're still printing HDR stuff here because. I'm not quite sure what my regulator is going to want to see and whether or not they are going to be okay with electric QA. So I'm kind of keeping that on paper as well as in my QA. Okay. At this time, you have a monthly template but are currently working on an annual. So that annual is uh, that annual is it's more than an annual. Um, I've got several annual QA things, but what I was looking at doing was trying to set up an annual QA that mirrored a lot of the variant acceptance tests procedures. Um, I like the acceptance test procedures. I think they're very good tests, and I think they're very good tests to use to benchmark things as you move forward um, with a, you know, with your LINAC to look at your, your, your percentage depth doses and all of your other parameters you check at acceptance. Um, so that, that one is just, that's just a, that one I showed you was a sort of an over and beyond that was sort of like the super annual QA test. Um, let's see. Can I push daily QA checker results from Sun Nuclear devices to my QA? I don't know the answer to that, and I, I say that we actually have at uh, Salem there's a daily QA checker, and I don't know what format those are put in. And the best I could tell you was if you could get the data in uh, CSV or Excel, you could set up a template to import that data. Um, but I would probably refer to a, you know, my QA user that's got a, a daily QA checker. And then what do we have here? Is my QA vendor neutral? And I don't know what vendor neutral means. Um, Does I, that mean it would work with any vendor's um, machine? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can use it with the Lectos variants, or it doesn't really matter what machine you're checking with it. Um, as a matter of fact, the list of machines that you can set up um, is now, it's, if you look at the whole thing in sort of a, a tree version, it's, it's absolutely monstrous because they've got all of the vendors, Linux, you've got Cobalt units, you've got TPSs, you've got CTSIMs, and it's just a, a large collection of data. With Phantoms, at least, yes, you can. You know, it, as I mentioned, for the, some of your imager checks, whether you want to use standard imaging Phantoms, Dose Lab Phantoms, or anybody else's Phantoms, they'll probably work. Um, for your your image analysis, um, it's really good with cat fans. So those are vendor neutral kind of things. Um. Okay, so uh, I've got another question, which is, um, how, what was your experience with transitioning from your previous software to uh, MyQA? You know, it's, it's obviously a sort of bit of an investment of time to get to grips with new um, software setup. Did you have any help uh, what, during that transition? And so, uh, what's the uh, what's the uh, what's the what I'm thinking of here is is painful the right word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I uh, listen. You know, for those of us on this line who are actually practicing medical physicists that work in a real clinic in the real world, this is going to take some work. This is not easy. This, this is absolutely not an easy. This is just like setting up a new mosaic or a new aria. I mean, this is again. This is back to the whole expectations on installation, it's not overnight. And as I said, you're going to have, not only are you using this, but it's your entire clinic that's using this. And you're going to have some, there's going to be a learning curve for some people. There's going to be some changes that need to be made. Some, you know, you may need to modify the way some of your QA is done. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's doable. And it's worth the time to do, um, to make, to hopefully make life easier on the physicist to try to keep track of you know multiple Linux, multiple CTs, HDRs, all these other things. It it's it's yeah, it's worth it, but it takes some work. I don't want again, I don't want anyone to think this is an overnight. This has been, you know, a year or so trying to get all this stuff set up and the therapist trained and everybody okay with it and we still have issues and things that people would like changed and it's you know it it adds it, it takes some of your work and shifts it from one place to another. Um Let's see here. Is my QA vendor neutral? Um, if let's see, is it vendor neutral? If not, are there any vendors that are vendor neutral with regard to using different QA vendors, Sun, Standard Imaging, and RIT? And I I, I don't know. Um, 
that are that are vendor neutral. Are, are you, and I'm assuming you're talking about Linux vendors or um, sort of uh, acquisition devices, tanks or profilers or something like that. Um, so yeah, and and that wh wh whoever's asking the the vendor neutral questions, if you've if you've got my email address, if not, get it and send me your your question offline, and we can talk about that. Or you're more than welcome to give me a call after this if you want, and we can discuss the vendor neutrality um, regarding the the stuff here. Will you have other webinars focused on MyQA tutorials? I, I guess we can if you want. Um, that's fine. Or as I told the other person, I mean any. For any of the people who are setting up MyQA or anything like that, I, you know, I've, I've got an email. Please feel free to email any questions that you have. Um, if I'm busy, I'll get to it when I can, but um, I'm certainly happy to help. We went through a lot of growing pains with this while it was under development and while it was in clinical release, and still to this day, it's it's you know still changing with those two annual releases. There's more and more things that are added every day, and so it, it's. Yeah, but anybody who, if you're getting if you're getting this software set up and you want some help or sample templates or something, I'm more than happy to share anything we've got. Uh, if I can save you four hours of time of banging your head up against a wall, I'd be happy to do that. Um, <laughs> so as a final question then, um, just to sum up, I mean, if people are thinking about um, moving to an integrated system, what, how would you say it really helps you save time, and how much of an improvement does it offer you? Uh, hmm. You know, as far as time savings go, I, you know, I don't know how much time it actually saves you because you're still doing all the same work, right? I mean, it doesn't really, it doesn't really save vault time or Linux time or anything else. You're just you, what it what it gives you is a, some level of organization. Um, and if you're scatterbrained as I am, sometimes it, it allows you that reminder. And so, it, it for, you know, again, for me, it was worth it for that point just to have that sort of that, that software looking over me, going, "Yeah, you might want to get this done." Um, or if I need to go back and, you know, I do a, the monthly on the machine, and I see the dose is a little higher than I expected it. What I'm going to do is pull up the cockpit, go back to the trend result, look up that particular energy, look at the past 60 days worth of morning QA data, and see if I can see a trend in that. You know, is it is it actually going up, or is my tank not set up correctly? You know, before I go in there and start, you know, tweaking trim pots, um, you know, I can use that to look at the last 60 days worth of data, 90 days or 120 days, to see if I've got an upward trend in my dose. You know, maybe. Maybe something does need to be adjusted, or if I look at it and it's completely flat for the last 60 days, you know what? Tear your tank down, come back tomorrow and set it up again. You've probably got some sort of setup error. So, uh, you know, for me, that's some uh, that's some things. So, I don't know. Anybody got? Oh, hey, the one thing I did want to mention, and I I think I got permission to say this. Their IBA is I have version 2017.002 in beta right this moment, and I am really really excited about that because they have updated the reporting feature. And so all of these, um, I'm trying to think, let me see if I can go back a couple slides right here without destroying the internet right here, back to one of my, back to one of my cues. And this is a suggestion I had made some time ago. Um, I think somebody must have thought it was a good idea. I think we've got two minutes left. Okay, so for these cues right here on all these templates, like this TG53 template, I have a cue that I built for this guy right here, and that is that one right there. Right, and on that it has a name, it has a description, and inside each of these descriptions it has the acceptance criteria and the test is what's going to you know. Up until this moment, you could print out the results of this test and it was just fine. What they've allowed you to do now is you can take your template when you're finished writing this thing out, and you've got all the gory details of your tests in it, how to set it up, which phantom to use, which energy to use, jaw sizes, all this fun stuff. You can, in the next version, you'll be able to print these tests out. So once you're done building this thing, you've got all your morning, annual, monthly, whatever QA, you can print this out, and what it looks like is a procedure manual. You have a very clear, concise description of all the tests you do on your accelerator, the description on how to do them, your acceptance criteria, what's being tested, and you can 
print that out. You can PDF it. You can put it in a three-ring binder. You can do whatever you want. And it's really, really nice. I really appreciated the engineers putting that in. They put a lot of work in that. And so it's it's uh, it's it's good stuff coming. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that second version coming out this year. So anyway, and I'm out of time in four seconds, unless anyone has any <laughs> yeah. questions. Well, thank you again, James, and uh, and thanks to everyone in the audience who asked a question. If we didn't get to your question, then we could be in touch uh, by email with an answer. Uh, remember as well that the webinar is approved for one credit with CAMPEP, MDCB, and uh, ASRT, uh, and you can find all the details that you need for that accreditation in the attachments and links um, set, set area of the webinar. If you'd like to watch the webinar again, or you'd want to recommend it to a colleague, it will soon be available on Physics Connect and on medicalphysicsweb.org to view on demand. You just need to click on the multimedia tab on the home page. And if you haven't done so already, please do rate the webinar using the ratings button on your screen. So thanks again for, to James, and thanks to everybody who has joined us today. And the webinar is now over. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>